You're listening to the Slavic Literature Pod, your shelf help guide to all things Slavic. I'm Cameron Lalana. And I'm Mac Arasimovic. And today we're talking about part one, chapter 28 of Vasily Grossman's Life and Fate, uh, talking about <laughs> more cruel encounters on the street. Finally, Ludmilla has reached Saratov, uh, but we aren't quite over the civilians treating soldiers bit badly. Oh, no, no. You might have thought, surely that's enough for that journey. No, we're not even we're not even close to done with that yet. So uh, Ludmilla arrives in Saratov to finally arrive at the the uh, school building turned hospital where her son is. And Matt, um, is, is there anywhere in particular that you would like to start? Well, Cameron, nice that you've asked. I feel like we have covered this chapter multiple times already, <laughs> even though that's not true. We did cover it in our main episode for this month, but mentally, I feel like we've covered it multiple times. Well, we've also started to talk about it in other dailies and then realized that this yep. chapter hasn't happened yet and then had yes. to undo that. So it might have actually exceeded. We might have done it many times over, which you have all just not heard because we had to delete it because we realized it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yes. Uh, so there's a couple things that happen in, in sequence here. And uh, we'll maybe give Ludmilla a pass on how she acts in this chapter or doesn't act. But we'll, we'll see. <laughs> uh, our Discord says no so far. And so right, right when she gets off the train, she is accosted by, uh, or the train, uh, the boat. I don't know why I keep think mentally thinking it's a train. Whatever. She's walking down some steps and she's kind of... Wait, this is this chapter, right? Yeah, that, that, yes, I think right. so. Right. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. No, right, so right after she, she gets onto the steps onto the landing stage, she's kind of accosted by... Uh, she says, or the narrator says it's a drunk in a soldier's greatcoat, which seems to imply it is not an actual soldier, but somebody who has uh, taken... This, this great coat um that's it's kind of an interesting thing because of what happens next uh or one of the things that happens next which is um what what appears to be a red army soldier getting released from the hospital who is now recently blind is trying to get help to get onto a tram and the the woman is the the woman that he approaches on the street to try and help swears at him pushes him down um, he loses his balance. He falls on the pavement. It's a kind of uncomfortable scene. And Ludmilla is sitting there thinking, where did this inhuman behavior come from? Uh, meanwhile, not helping the man who was just pushed down. Um, <laughs> just kind of, you know, witnessing all this, thinking about, wow, everyone's really mean to each other and then do, doing nothing to help. Um, granted, she could have been kind of um, shaken by uh, or, or spooked by the... The drunk, the soldier, the question mark, whoever whoever it really was. The the reason I say it, it's to me not a hundred percent clear is just be, because those two things happen so close together. I'm wondering if this is uh, a, a fact or this is just how Ludmilla perceived it to be. I think I would say out of all of our characters, she's she's so far pretty pretty dramatic. I think also, but given what we know of Ludmilla, she is by far yeah. the most likely to notice the moral imbalance while also doing nothing to address it. Yeah, uh, this this young soldier is neither her son, uh, nor a cat, nor a dog. Mm -hmm. I think that's the beginning and end of the list of things she really cares about. Yeah, I recall from the last chapter and dunking on her younger sister's artwork. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but that's a, that's a flashback from Stalingrad. That's a little treat <laughs> for you if you read all the way through. It's about <laughs> one funny moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and of that moment, we had one Discord user Reagan who shared a great meme in the meme channel, who, which you should go. Uh, check out if you're not already in there and have not already seen it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right but i think this is a great point this is maybe continuing on this idea of we've been talking about of grossman exploring how have people become this way what has created this what has made us this way or at least what has in our most unkind moments or maybe we should phrase it this way we are seeing an explosion of this sort of unkindness, this anti-human kindness. As uh, and from where is that being drawn? And in this chapter, we're not seeing any answers to that. Merely another symptom of it. But we have, of course, Nudmila addressing the problem correct directly in saying, "Okay, well, what? Where is it? Could it have? Could it have been the hardships we're facing in our country, or could it have been that this was someone who simply had too much? Right? Where? Like where? From? Whence does this come?" from feast or famine in this chapter we have no answer for that yeah it's kind of the 
Oh, not exactly the inverse, but there's this question that's constantly posed throughout the book, which is how or why does God allow evil? And this is a sort of slight inversion of that, which is throws it back at us and asks, well, how do we allow evil? And in in this case, Ludmilla says, well, quite easily, uh, you kind of stand by, stand by and, and watch it happen. Um, but then it sort of brings us to this to the chapter's end which is a, a a little bit different and maybe tangentially addressing some of the same questions but where she's kind of trying to i i, I don't believe she's really supposed to be in the military hospital where tolia is and so she sort of well she she finds her way in. it's it's not well guarded right so she's she's able to go in and she's you know talking to this to this clerk and trying to figure out if he's if Tolia is actually in this hospital and she thinks it was as though she were standing before God. Uh, it was in his power to pronounce life or death. And he had paused for a moment to decide. And the and Grossman just leaves you on that cliffhanger on this chapter. Also dangling that in front of you because God in this case is Grossman. He can make whatever he wants happen. And, and for sure, well, he'll delve it out as he chooses to. Absolutely. Um, but I, I think it's funny that like the, the full power of, an expression of the Soviet state for Ludmilla is expressed in one clerk. Just the, the amount of power that some people have just in, in, in small instances over each other, um, especially in th this type of system where a, a, a bureaucrat can really be the end all be all in some cases is well, first of all, fascinating, but also a clear mechanism for something or some role in which you can do a, a lot of evil, I would say, proportionally to your role. Mm. Bringing it back to Zhenya's experience in Kwebisha, we saw that, you know, extended. In this case, it's merely the potential, but this potential is so great and so terrible because it's that potential of the the life or death of a child, right? I mean, already the the housing permit is anxiety inducing enough but when you have this ultimate the final dominion life and death the dominion of gods and clerks in this case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you, you think that's not true but just think imagine your dmv everybody conspires to not give out new driver's license or renew them <laughs> you know how long it'd probably take before someone caught on to that but how many days would be ruined uh yeah, I can easily imagine that. Yeah. If they just kept, kept kept shuffling around the paper, no, you really actually need this one document. Oh, sorry, our website hasn't been updated. You need this new form. I don't need to imagine that. I, I, I The DMV failed to send me my ID followed by more than one trip where I didn't have the exact right documentation, which means I'm still... <laughs> in the system, I have a, I have my current uh, driver's license, but I'm really fighting tooth and nail to get a physical copy of Cameron that. Cameron is technically a stateless person at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did want to bring in a comment from a Discord user, Leia, here, who kind of goes back to the 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 attitudes of people that we were we were talking about. Who uh, Leia says sometimes hardship bring hardships bring about all the hopeful things that Ludmilla imagines. Uh, this is kind of in reference to something she says, where you've got like all these maybe all this hardship will make us a better people, not exactly in that language, but uh, going back to Leia, but often they don't. I keep thinking about a line I read in another novel about how a character wanted to break the length of her life across another's back. That's what it feels like here. And that's mm. definitely not, that's not the language Grossman is using, uh, but I think that's within the range of questions Grossman is asking is, are we inflicting ourselves, our own miseries on everyone else? Um, could be. Yeah, not only that question, but just the the question of Will struggling for something, you know, inherently allow you to reach your goal or, or reach something good does enduring bad things bring you good things uh yeah. i i don't know i'm 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 disinclined towards that view i would say right and, and i think that you know grossman kind of is as well based on my interpretation of of him uh which is so, something that is well i'd i'd say a certain certain religious groups feel a certain way about but sort of that just because you endure bad things does not mean 
that you will get good things. Just because you do good things does not mean that you will necessarily have a, a good reward or a reward that, um, how should I say? Uh, I, I don't know what I'm trying to get out here. But right, you reap what you sow. Yeah, you reap what you sow, but but not exactly. I think that, that just a lot of the, the violence that's shown in, in this book doesn't necessarily have this sort of comprehensible effect, I guess I'd say. All the all the, all the evil and the badness doesn't necessarily bring good. Right. It reminds me of the, your analysis that, of uh, Blood Meridian, where you have this book full of uh, actions w where you may feel that you would like something moral to come of this, or I would like these bad people to get a bad end. Um, and many of them do, but oftentimes the end to which someone comes is completely unrelated to the way they live their life. It simply happens. Like a... yeah. To draw from another uh, Cormac McCarthy book, a flip of a coin, regardless of how how you came to that end, you come to that end. That's kind of uh, that's kind of where I feel like Grossman ultimately comes down, um, which is in one way why I really like reading him, but another way why it can be really frustrating to read him is because he's not particularly clear right. on these things, and it's not really possible to be clear on these issues. I think. Um, but they still do have lasting effects on us politically and religiously, and I, I don't know, it touches a lot of facets of life. But anyways, if you see a blind soldier, maybe you should help them get onto the train if they ask you. Or at least don't push them down into the ground. I'd recommend that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Anywho, I think that's probably enough for today, so in that case, you'll all hear from us again soon.